Hi Leo, this is your April 2020 general tarot forecast. So this is for Leo Sun, Leo Moon, and Leo Rising signs. Just for the record, I'm recording this mid-March, so I truly hope everyone is staying safe <laughs> and in good health wherever you're watching. We do have the Justice card jumping out for you. Uh, there could be a Leo individual involved. Um, or we could just having be having something um, majorly rebalanced or needing balance at this time. We will find out as we look forward to your detailed messages for April, guys. So I'm going to be laying two layers of tarot and a Celtic cross for you for an in-depth general reading for your sign, sun, moon, rising signs. And then, of course, we will get oracle cards from the other decks here. So, guys, what do you need to know for April 2020? This is all for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising. Messages for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising for April 2020. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, April 2020. All right. So I'm going to lay out your first layer. I'll probably be making some comments about that before we get your second layer on top. And as always, I will look at the bottom of the deck of each of the tarot decks for some, you know, the general behind the scenes or what we can expect is sort of affecting or being affected by looking at the bottom of the deck. So we're starting off with a really nice wish card. couple of sevens already. Lots of water, maybe some big changes for you. Big decision, possibly concerning your family or loved ones at this time. You have some information sharing or some uh, sense of isolation here and then a message of love. So we have, we're inundated with cups, I would say, is the um, overarching element here. One, two, three, four cups. We have a, um, just one pentacle card, one, um, sorry, two pentacle cards, um, one wands, and then we have a one, two um, air cards. So in other words, by and large, we're looking at a lot of emotions. <laughs> Um, or at least we're going to be touching on the emotions, so the emotional world is going to be very important for you here, Leo. Bottom of the deck energy, two of pentacles, we're going to qualify that in just one moment by getting your second layer, and then we'll go into detail into the cards for each position for you in your Celtic cross, Leo. Just trying to look at other major themes here. Um, Interesting to see the King and the Knight of Cups. Oh, we have two Knights too. Two Knights, two Sevens. Let me see if the two Knights are significant. Um, we do have an indication that friends from the past could be playing a part right now, or at least you'd like to hear from them, or you'd like them to play a part. Friends from your past. Um, you would like to maybe communicate with them. You might be hearing from them. All right, so qualifying April 2020 for Leo. I'm, I really just got the mini deck to sort of play with this idea of getting a double layer, and now I'm rather obsessed with it, so I'm probably going to get a larger deck um, so I can have two regular size decks to do your extended forecasts for the month here, guys. <laughs> I always giggle when I see the Seven of Swords. Maybe I shouldn't, but um, it's just, it's tricky. It's a tricky card. It's tricky um, energy, but we'll look at it. We'll look at it in detail in just one second here, guys. Bottom of the deck energy, as I mentioned, Two of Pentacles. It's now qualified by the Eight of Cups. So um, you know, Two of Pentacles, anytime we're looking at Pentacles, in my estimation, we're looking at nouns, typically, right, um, in terms of what the suits rule, okay, so cups rule emotions, 
technically speaking. Pentacles are going to rule places, people, and things, things that we can touch and, you know, handle with the five senses, including money, jobs, people. Um, for example, this is a general reading for you. However, you could be watching this with a relationship in mind. You could be juggling relationships or you could have some a choice to make here. We do have a choice perhaps over a Leo individual or about a Leo individual um, up in the future here as well. Or they could be making a choice about you, um, Leo, because this is general. As I said, this is either what you're outputting or what's coming into you. For a personal reading, you can always contact me if you have a, a specific question to look at. But in a general sense here, we're definitely moving away. Here we are with more cups. So our emotional, our emotional world is impacted or it is impacting the world of, say, finance, things, people, um, person, people, places, or things, right? But because it's the Eight of Cups, we're moving away from any, say, hardship. There's no emotional hard feelings here. You're just able to move away from something that was troubling. You might have gotten a break from something, indeed, that um, you may have been juggling or you may have felt like you needed to juggle here. We do have a lot of um, work, worker energy here. So we have the Ten of Rods over <laughs> the Nine of Cups. So like I said, when we see the Nine of Cups jump out uh, for the first layer, that's extremely beautiful. This is a major wish card. Wishes could be coming true. Of course, as I just mentioned, uh, elementally, this is looking at your emotional world. However, qualified by the Ten of Wands, we know that this is, you know, enterprise, this is work, this is will, um, this is action. So, and then the tens necessarily are endings and beginnings or completions. So, and the ten of ones particularly is a little bit of, um, I would say, an uphill battle. It feels like a lot of extra work, a lot of strain, maybe a little bit of stress, but it's something that you take on willingly, which is different, safe than the nine of swords, which is, you know, the acceptance of something or the end ending of something, but it could have been painful or, um, maybe even felt unnecessary. Here it just feels like perhaps there's even a labor of love. You could be helping other people at this time. I want to mention you could be helping other people's wishes come true or they could be helping you at this time. No matter how that plays out for you though, guys, it looks like it is going to be a little bit of extra work or it's going to feel like some work, but probably a labor of love and you will um, feel really, really good about it. Here is some more cups energy. Look at how these are playing against each other. We have a lot of, you know, swords with cups, right? Wands with cups, <laughs> swords with pentacles. So there's a lot of moving parts here um, in your reading. There's a lot of maybe even outside influence at this time, I would suggest. Uh, we do have some characters as well. I want to mention that we are dealing with a couple of individuals or uh, personalities. So here we have the Knight of Cups as an example, right? Here we're looking at possibly a Pisces person or energy. Over here we're looking at uh, Gemini person or energy. This is Scorpio person or energy. This is, where are we now? Leo person or energy. We are looking at um, a Libra person or energy. And I, and I will get into more details when I'm speaking about energy, but I'm just rhyming off some terms so that maybe you have Libras or Scorpios in your life. And then, of course, um, we have the uh, Taurian energy with the Hierophant up there, along with the um, Knight of Cups. So the Knight of Cups is featured twice, once at the really beginning here and once at the end. Um, but again, we're looking at some Pisces energy back here, Pisces person or energy. Back to the middle. Now, I wanted to mention here as well that, you know, by the time we're looking at the first two cards, we're looking at the influences or the direction of your reading today under the auspices of the bottom of the deck. Now, the second layer would be the obstacles to moving forward in this direction or the situation that you're up against. And um, this is the Seven of Wands qualified with the Knight of Cups, right? So again, we're looking at one's energy. You're, you could be defending yourself, defending a position that you're taking, defending a dream or a wish at this time, and you're doing it very lovingly, or you feel like um, there's a lot of heart, there's a lot of sensitivity that's involved with this right now. You could feel sensitive about protecting yourself or someone else at this time. Again, I just want to, you know, quickly mention a little bit more about the Knight of Cups. We do have it here twice. 
It is technically ruled by Pisces. It really can be any water sign, but you know, Pisces in terms of you know imagination. Um, we're looking at um, you know phenomena. We're looking at emotional intelligence, right? You know, this is technically what the twelfth house is going to uh, rule. We're also looking at spirituality and self-sacrifice. So you could be helping others, or others could be really helping you at this time, and it could be a labor of love here, guys. Here in the position of the desired aim or what is likely achievable at this time is, you know, just at first glance when I'm looking as, you know, maybe a pause to financial growth, honestly, and perhaps obviously if you're a tarot reader and you're watching this at first glance, if you just took these tarot cards together, you would say, you know, like there's a pause in the direction that you're moving, probably around finances, right? Um, and this is pretty standard, as I said, with what's going on currently, you know, um, around the world right now. Uh, this is probably standard for you or someone you know on a, on a smaller grand scale. But uh, Seven of Pentacles on its own is really looking at, you know, you're waiting for somebody to co something to come to fruition. Again, again, we're dealing with our pentacle energy, so person, place, or thing. Um, and it's a general reading, so apply as a, accordingly. And then the Four of Swords is actually like a nice healing um, energy. It's a rest. It's a recovery energy. You could be getting money back right now. You could be waiting for money. You could be waiting for news on money or a direction on how to invest or spend at this time. But there's definitely no rush. The Sevens are typically a little bit of a... Um, a revision, sort of a reflection, and then the fours are generally about stability, um, and the four of swords in particular is about pause, um, recovery, and um, you know reflection, right? So these are two extremely reflective cards here together. So yeah, I mean, unsurprisingly, right? Everyone's just sort of waiting. Some of us with waited bated breath, but others about you know how, in which way. Are we supposed to move and you're definitely taking a little bit of downtime taking a little bit of a break from that here's our here's the second seven here's where we're looking at um, the seven of swords of course which qualifies the king of cups now this is interesting if you look at the king as fixed energy as Scorpio energy eighth house energy and um, sex death and rebirth there could be some major transformations here with regard to eighth house energy yes the king of cups can technically be I would not even say technically I would say that the king of cups it is ruled by fixed energy all the kings are fixed so it's I believe technically ruled by Scorpio but it could indicate really any water sign so Scorpio Cancer Pisces but I would suggest here strongly um, because of the way I read and how I feel about these cards that this is a little tricky information. This is a tricky situation. Somebody might be trying to get away with something here. There could be some courage involved. There could be some courage necessary at this time. And we're looking at the distant past here. So this is the position of the distant past. Um, there could have just been something up in the air, something that felt tricky. We are looking at, you know, swords energy, which is information, ideas, beliefs, communication and something around something that's highly transformative at this time. So something emotionally profound um, could be transformed in a tricky, upsetting, or un unforeseen way. Here we have the Wheel of Fortune, right? Qualifying the Knight of Air, and this is in our distant past. So again, as an individual, this is Gemini energy, right? It's mutable energy, just like Pisces. You know, Knight of Cups is all the knights are mutable, okay, as opposed to fixed energy, which is mature and stable and for the long haul. Um, you know, mutable energy is typically changeable. It's very, very changeable very quickly. And here we have it. And of course, it's air. So we're dealing with Gemini. We're dealing with communication, right? And we see more Gemini influence over here with the lovers, with the world. So the recent past, you know, what we're just coming out of is communication that is highly changeable and somewhat fickle um, even though it has its best intentions to be honest and, and evidential you know it's changing very quickly the wheel of fortune does create a lot of luck it does support a lot of luck and um, hope and um, I think that's something very very positive could be coming um, 
at least by the second or third week for you guys in April. I'm glad to say that for you, you know, with some really strong, pleasant cups energy here. Could involve children, yours or someone else's. Um, but yeah, big changes around what we're communicating about, sudden information changes, again, mutable, um, open to change, open to new ideas, and then, uh, as I said here, with qualified by the Wheel of Fortune, Something is coming around again, but it looks like luck could be on your side. We have a lot of angelic uh, support here as well. You could um, succumb to something. If you're not careful, if you're not looking at the right information, or if you're relying perhaps too heavily on the mind, I would you know, involve some of your intuition. And then at the higher end of things, or at the greatest level of this condition, you could rise to an occasion. You could really come, come to someone's rescue, or someone can come to your rescue. Uh, but you know, it's nice energy. There's nothing really troubling about it. It's just, it's pretty standard actually, which kind of helps, helps explain on a, you know, on a tarot level, what could be going on for you at this time in human history. Here we have in our um, new influence, near future, or what's to be discovered, right? So here's our glorious 10 of cups qualified with the page of cups and you know this is just glorious energy guys it truly is so I would say like I just mentioned between the second and third week of April no matter what is happening for you at home and or at work it looks like extremely positive outcomes for your home and family um, including any children at this time you could be dealing with a younger water sign person or someone who's just very very creative and sensitive a new opportunity for a love relationship or communication regarding love could be evident in the near future at that time for you second to third week of April very nice to see here we have the world qualified by the two of swords so here we have I believe we have two twos where did you see the okay bottom of the deck right so some choices some decisions um bigger one up here bigger one about how other people um how others are viewing how you're making decisions but they you're being definitely put in a position of trust that's for darn sure people really trust you right now or you're definitely trusting someone else that you feel is qualified to make big decisions but with regard to the position that reveals how you feel about the situation, you know, yeah, it's hard to make a decision about the world right now. It's hard to understand or even, you know, be confident about which direction to take. I would seek clarity at this time, seek evidence. Um, maybe don't put all your eggs in one basket right now. There could be two different points of view around a world situation, something that affects something um, bigger than your family, bigger than your home life, right? Um, and then the world is ultimately completion. One, say, chapter of the life is over, another is beginning. Um, and as I said, we do have a decision up here to make around, could be about the family, it could be about a child, could be about a position of um, power, security, creativity, even love and romance, again, depending on how you're viewing this. But... Um, Clarity will be needed at this time. It looks like you just need to make up your mind. And like I said, um, how other people are viewing you at this time is the lovers qualified by the king of wands. If we're looking at people or energies that are uh, indicated within these cards, we're looking at Gemini and Leo energy, technically. Again, we had Gemini indicated back here, communication, mutable energy, and then Leo, right? Leo energy, fixed sign energy. Um, ruled by the sun and this is uh, fire so we have you know fire and air so a lot of communication uh, a lot of sudden communication someone could be in charge or be putting themselves in charge or a decision about who should be in charge at this time this is someone who could run roughshod over other people who are quieter or a little bit more sensitive um, and then of course Gemini can be fickle so if these two are actually people or if this is you and you're dealing with a Gemini or making a decision around mutable energy where you don't know which way to go maybe just try not to make a decision at this time here in the last column we're looking I'd say at the last week of April um, so really strong personality types or energy types here again I want to mention in terms of people or energy supported by the signs related to these cards we're dealing with third and fifth house energy third house being communication fifth house being romance and um, creativity 
So it could just be about, you know, how you're going to be creative at home if, if you've had to stay home this past little while. Here we have the Four of Cups qualifying the Queen of Swords. So, you know, this is your hopes and fears. She is te technically the Divorce Queen. She's Libra. This is partnerships and relationships, whether this is home, business, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then the Four of Cups just indicates a little bit of boring or becoming disinterested or uninspired. <laughs> Um, so just, you know, watch communication around any boredom or disinspiration at this time or definitely seek that. This is also a, an extremely wise person who puts truth first. This person would rather be alone um, than lie to somebody. So it could be that there's a price to pay for telling the truth here as well. And that could be um, that is in your hopes and fears column. But we do have a nice outcome here, guys. We have the Knight of Cups looking right at the Hierophant, like I mentioned. Um, and as I said, you know, the Hierophant being the Taurus ruled, and we are looking at some more Piscean energy, technically, back here. So, you know, we have some Pisces energy uh, looking right at Taurus. So we have some endings and beginnings. We have some imagination, uh, paranormal, phenomenal, these types of themes around, you know, Taurus, around the home, possessions, stability. You know, it's an earth element. It's second house, right? This is your, your speaking and singing voice. This is um, basic possessions. And, and it, it does include relationships. So relationships could be affected at this time. Hierophant, also a major arcana, so it could be ruling the um, obligations to relationships as well. Uh, it could also indicate loving communication within an institutional um, situation or design you know, simply put, that could be a marriage for you. Uh, but it also could be business. So something that's institutional here, you could have people looking up to you or you could be looking up to someone that you consider to be in charge as well. Or you simply could just be dealing with a Taurus person and they have a lot of love and support for you at this time. Okay, Leo, so let's see what else is going on with our Oracle cards here for you. Overall, I'm pleased to say there's nothing really upsetting or difficult about your reading for April. Really nice to see that. Um, it does look, however, as though you will have to make at least one major decision or one major decision will be made for you. I don't see it being a terrible outcome. Um, so, oh wow, look at that. That was just flipping in as, as I was shuffling. Super interesting to see deception here. Let's look at these all together in just a moment here. I am going to equate this here with our distant past. I do think that there could be information that is missing at this time, um, being misused, um, creating indecision. I mean, that, that's pretty obvious, right? We have a lot of decision cards. But um, yeah, let me get these a little bit closer. And then we have a little bit of tricky energy back here with the recent past as well. So maybe you just thought something, maybe you didn't believe something, or maybe you were over, um, how do they say that? Over, uh, oh gosh. Like, like you want um, positive, over positive. Um, I hope you know what I mean. Like thinking the best of everyone and believing that everyone's going to do the right thing. You know, just, just be aware if you're making those types of decisions. Okay, that's way too many. playfulness here for you. I do see children or young people or um, if this is a relationship for you that something is wow. Okay, something is in the early stages of something here for you. I'm going to read these two together. These are extremely potent right now. Um, I wouldn't say they're matching anything technically in a very extreme or dangerous way, but I do find it interesting to see both um, deception cards. We have two deception cards here, uh, Leo. We have Owl, which technically is deception, and then we have deception from the Romance Angels, right? So someone is wearing a false mask, self felt, let me begin again. Someone is wearing a false self mask in this relationship. Now, as I said, if this is about authorities, 
and it isn't a, a person, if this is about an institution, as I just mentioned, you know, maybe try to do some of your own research at this time. Look for something, you know, seek that clarity, make the decision. Um, might have to cut something out here, something that is uninspiring or doesn't capture your imagination. Um, but it is interesting to see that there's a lot of magic behind the scenes. Uh, deception with the owl necessarily is really talking about the power of deception, the power of magic, the power of the dark and the, and the light. Um, magic so you know i would just protect myself and my family at this time from anything that feels untoward um I, as i mentioned i believe early on i think you're going to want to pay a little bit more attention to your intuition um if that feels like it's your emotional world if you if you want to call your intuition your gut that's great i would do that i would pay just as much attention to your gut or intuition during the month guys than i would then i would your um like a clinical or, um, you know, information or news sources at this time. Make sure someone doesn't get something up on you, though. Look at all the nooks and crannies at something. Also, I want to mention, even if you're not the one being deceptive, someone is definitely trying to get through to you. The only cool thing about the deception with the owl from that deck is that everyone sees through right now. All you really need to do is have the eyes to see through them. So, um... Don't be shy in doing that, and certainly, you know, don't try to get away with something here either. Uh, playfulness is really important. As I said, this did jump out. It's really important to see this here. We do want some playfulness. We do have some younger energy here, a couple of knights, um, a page. So, you know, take care of children if, the, if that's what's going on in your life right now or something that appeals to you for an inner child. And then poised and not for you. This is extremely interesting to see these together. You may have wanted to go back to something, a decision that you m m have made or wanted to make, for example, may not be available to you at this time. Even though you were in a great or grand position to begin that, say in early April, maybe just put it off for now. Like I said, there is a major sort of, sort of a rest or recovery period that could be um, really important for you guys at the time, for the time being. So, you know, Stay tight, take care of yourself, um, use your intuition, use your gut feeling, gather more information, be decisive, um, and make a decision that's based on your heart here, guys. Always, always um, look for the best in yourself and others. Now, that is your April reading for 2020. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have a second, comment below. Let me know uh, what you think about it. And if you like my content, guys, please like, share, and subscribe. And... Please join me in the next video for your sign. Until then, take excellent care, everybody. Bye for now.